this, uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about using a reagent called SOCl2. And you're, you're going to see this in OCHEM2, so I'm just going to drop its name right now. It's called Final Chloride. And if you ever see anything with sulfur, you're probably going to see this Thio prefix. It just means, hey, look at me. I have sulfur in, in the compound. Okay, so what you need to know about this, and let me just give you an example of a mechanism. So let's look at something along the lines of just propanol. Let's just say I wanted, hey, I want to replace this OH with a chlorine. And before uh, you know, we talk about SLCl2, the way you'd have to do this, because if you think about this, this would be a very quick one-step uh, SN2 reaction, right? However, the only thing that prevents us from doing that is the fact that OH is a kind of a crappy leaving group, right? Not the best. So in the days before we knew of the magic powers of SLCl2, you probably would have done, you would have thrown in some tosyl chloride to make this OTS, and then you would have thrown in Cl minus, you know, NaCl and DMSO, some good solvent, whatever. However, now what I'm telling you is we don't need this two-step mess to get this done. What we can actually do is in one beautiful sleek step, if you just throw in SLCl2, bam, you got your primary chlorine. Okay, so how's this work? So let's dive into that. I'm going to pick a nice color. I'm going to pick black because we got a lot of colors going on. All right, so, and what you're going to see before I start this is that sometimes mechanisms and mechanisms in OCHEM, they're not the most complicated thing. It's just when you, you know, take off certain H's, they're like little acid-based things, but just bear with me. This is, this kind of is more of an OCHEM 2 thing, but it doesn't hurt to know it. Okie dokie. So, and I'm just refreshing myself. So final chloride looks like this. Almost looks like DMSO in a way, except you replace those methyl groups with chlorines. So your very first step is this OH, right, electronegative atom, it's going to see that sulfur. And if you think about it, sulfur is bonded to three atoms much more electronegative than itself, right? There's a big, fat delta plus sitting on that sulfur. Oxygen sees that. It has, itself has a delta minus. So he is going to help himself by attacking that sulfur. So at the same time, right, some, uh, some bond's going to leave. And it's going to be the bond to this oxygen right there. So we got oxygen, he just donated an electron pair and bonded to sulfur, so he has a positive charge. We just then, we have the two chlorines, and now we have this O minus, right, because this oxygen just accepted an electron pair. So we started neutral, technically we're still overall neutral. So what I'm going to do next is that oxygen is not a big fan of that positive charge. We need to get rid of that. And I actually forgot, sometimes people, they will put either a water here, or more commonly, what you'll see is a triethylamine. Something around that is going to help deprotonate that oxygen. So let's just say we have the triethylamine around. Nitrogen has that one lone pair. He'll grab the H, and that now oxygen is deprotonated. Whoops, sorry. That was a straight arrow. My fault. All right, so we still got that O minus on the oxygen, the two chlorines and we are all set. Okay, so what's gonna happen next? Well, that oxygen doesn't, doesn't wanna stay with that negative charge. What is actually going to happen is that these electrons will swing down, reforming a double bond of sulfur, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna boot one of the chlorines, because chlorine's a good leaving group, right? That is no problem, we have no problem doing that. Okay, so I'm going that way, ran out of board, so I'm gonna come back over here. So at the oxygen, I got the sulfur, rebonded, double bonded to the oxygen, and one chlorine. Well. That chlorine is going to come back with a vengeance. He's chilling, just waiting for his opportunity. And what is super nice is through this initial attack, the kick up, the deprotonation, we've now effectively improved oxygen as a leaving group. It's almost like doing the tosyl chloride step and it's packaged in with the nucleophile. This is good to go. Chlorine's going to come in and he's going to attack this carbon right here. These electrons right here, they go to form a double bond right here because this is going to be sulfur dioxide, and while this bond forms, we boot the other chlorine. Goodbye. So, we then, at this carbon right, have our desired alkyl chloride. We've also made SO2, 
2, sulfur dioxide, and the lonely, lonely, lonely Cl- who can handle that negative charge well. So like I said, it's a little weird. I'm sorry I had that hiccup in the middle and that stray arrow, but it's sulfur, very partial positive, oxygen attacks, you kick up electrons. Some base the package in with the whole reaction will help deprotonate the oxygen, he hates that positive charge. From there, the oxygen with the negative charge, he's fed up with it, he swings down, reforms his double bond, you kick off one of the chlorines. That is the chlorine that is going to come back. He comes back, he attacks here because you've now made the oxygen a good leaving group, whatever it's attached to. You swing over electrons, you reform, or you form sulfur dioxide, and that effectively boots off the other chlorine. Okay, so why is this a good reaction? What is this good for us? So, or I guess, what does it do for us? Let me give you an example. Do, do, do. Okay. Sorry, I know I'm erasing, it's taking a bit of time. Okay. So, like I said, maybe you have a reaction like this. It's a complete the reaction. You need to do this, right? Well, think about the only way we, so assuming we don't use SLCl2, right? The way you would have done this before, one step, tosyl chloride. Second step, uh, the, you know, throw in Cl. In the, in the world of real chemistry, right? If you can do something in fewer steps, your yield will be higher, right? And I know that doesn't matter for, you know, people that aren't going to go on to be professional chemists or, you know, get a PhD. But if you can do this in one step, with one step of SLCl2, your yield is actually better. And that's something that actually matters. And remember, think about this. It's an SN2 reaction, right? So you will have stereochemical inversion. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to talk about a very similar reaction. The mechanism is actually shorter. You, if you guys handle this, the other one will be a cinch. See you in the next video.